105 Xbox 360 games. Oh, this is how you start a collection again after you sell pretty much everything. So I paid 100 pounds for a box of 105, what does that say, weed killer? Should I be wearing gloves? Who knows? I paid 100 pounds for 105 Xbox 360 games and I have absolutely no idea what's inside this box. It's been that long since I've ordered them and I have ordered quite a few Xbox 360 games over the last few weeks that I have no idea what's in this box. So I thought we would go over it together. Let's get inside this bad boy and see if I came out better off than I started. Anyway, it's so difficult to maneuver with this thing. If you like Xbox videos, then please consider subscribing to this channel. I make all sorts of Xbox shorts, full length videos, as well as discussions on all things Xbox. So if you like Xbox, then consider getting subscribed. Anyways, let's get into this bad boy. Let's open, I'm not even sure how this video is gonna like sound or look or anything because normally I don't record videos with a gigantic box of games. But my plan is, is to go through each one of these games and price them according to their current price charting price and see if we came out on top on the 100 pounds that I spent on this box. So I'll just hack at this thing that's her knife safety. I am now. So let's move this thing to a more convenient location. Let's put that thing down here and we will get stuck on and take a look. So first game we've got is Dead Island Riptide. Now, uh, for anyone that uh, was asking me, there have been a few people reached out to me on Twitter. My Twitter will be down in the, uh, the description below. But uh, yeah, a lot of people reached out and asked me what I did with my Xbox 360 collection and I sold most of it and I regret it deeply. So I am going to essentially be building up most of my Xbox collection again. I did buy a few heavy hitters that are coming separately, but uh, for, as far as like bulk games, like getting a lot of the games back up, uh, I went for this box. So we're starting with Dead Island Riptide. Uh, yeah, it comes with the manual, comes with the box. I have played the first uh, Dead Island, I think like three times but only the opening scene and it hasn't quite clicked with me yet. Um, which is weird because I love like open worldy style games if they're done well. I love zombie games if they're done well. So Dead Island should be a game that is on paper made for me. So yeah, no idea why that I uh, haven't really kind of taken to it, but who knows, maybe in the future I'll uh, play Dead Island and then move on to Riptide afterwards. So next, we have Band Hero. Uh, I love the hero games. Uh, I played Beatles Rock Band to death. Uh, I love the Guitar Hero games. Uh, Band Hero, as far as the music selection goes, manual and everything, cool. Uh, as far as the selection goes, it doesn't really seem like it's for me, but uh, yeah, who knows? Maybe it'll be fun for like some party stuff. I still have most of the instruments knocking around. Next, Kane and Lynch Dead Man. This game, I remember when this game came out, it got like there were so many ads over it. Like look, it even has like BAFTA stuff like on the front of the case, focus. Uh, but yeah, uh, it just never really took off. I think they expected it to be this like, you know, blow everything else out of the water, like mega triple A franchise, but it just doesn't really do anything. Uh, so yeah, there's that. Uh, Call of Duty Advanced Warfare, Call of Duty make guns shoot, make uh, good guys go win. Uh, yeah, it doesn't come with a manual because I don't think they do at this sort of late cycle of the 360s lifespan but yeah it comes with some kind of little advertisement thing inside which is cool then we have call of duty 4 the call of duty that has that achievement that everybody keeps talking about uh, i actually enjoyed this one i i don't play online games as much as i used to i kind of enjoy single player games more because i can just kind of sit down and jump in and jump out whenever i want um and i actually enjoyed the single player campaign in this i, I don't remember a lot of it it's been a while since i've, I've played it it was many many years but I do uh, recall really enjoying it, and I think I'll give it an all or go at some point. Who knows, we will do a Call of Duty video, which is good, because we also got the third Modern Warfare. There was three of them. Uh, it's very confusing nowadays, because uh, Call of Duty has decided to uh, redo. What is that on the focus on the K? What is that? How do games get in this state? Why does it not have an Xbox Live logo? Have you noticed that other games all say like Xbox Live at the top? But like this one doesn't for some reason, why is that? But yeah, um, Modern Warfare 3, I I mean, if I'm gonna be honest, I played World at War and then I stopped. Uh, I think I played Modern Warfare 2 online on a stream once uh, and we had like a bit of fun 
with like, I think it was a modded lobby or something and I ran around and like someone was hacking away and it was all good fun. But yeah, um, Modern Warfare 3, I've never played. I have no idea about it. No idea how all the extra Call of Duty stuff works nowadays because it's all Battle Royale craziness. Next is Borderlands 2. That's a game I understand. I played this to death. I loved this game. We've got the complete with the manual. Uh, yeah, Borderlands 2 was fantastic. I loved uh, the whole idea, the random guns and all, and like you get like they're just wild and wacky. Enemies are bullet sponges, but it's loads of fun because there's like acid flying everywhere and electricity and fire. And oh, it's just so much fun. Really fun story. I thought Handsome Jack was a, uh, I thought he was a great villain. I don't know what it was, but there was just something about like the mask thing he was wearing. I don't remember like the full story, but man. This was such a good game. Uh, next is Disney Sing It, something I don't expect that I'll be playing uh, too much of, but you know, yeah. Gears of War, classic, like uh, Xbox 360 game. Uh, yeah, I mean, Gears was the flagship title for the Christmas that it came out. I can't even remember what Christmas it was, like 2008 or something. But yeah, we got a complete copy. Uh, and yeah, uh, this, I think the remaster has like an upgrade for the Series X as well. So. I will probably end up playing the remaster just to kind of have like the nice modern sensibilities, but still like the originals hold up so well. I played the original Gears, I think three, not that long ago. I still haven't finished it, but yeah, they hold up surprisingly well, um, especially if you're playing on newer hardware with all the up and stuff. Then we have Forza Motorsport 2, the bundle copy. Uh, I, I don't have many of these bundle copies. It's the actual bundle copy too, which is great. I don't have a lot of these bundle copies. I absolutely love them. I did a video on it before talking about like the bundle copies and the different types of bundle copies that I come across. I don't know why. I just, I, I like little odd copies, little oddities and stuff and bundles definitely fall under that umbrella. Next we have Formula One 2011. I am not a big Formula One fan. I do have some friends that are Formula One fans that recommended me how to get into Formula One, but I just haven't gotten it because uh, yeah, I just, I don't know. It's uh, yeah. It just never really uh, like appealed to me immediately. But uh, I have been playing racing games lately. I played uh, Project Gotham Racing 3. I was uh, kind of working on a video where I'm like going through some really early Xbox 360 stuff. And yeah, uh, I'm starting to kind of enjoy racing games a lot more. So Formula 1, who knows? Something I might play in future. Saints Row 2. Uh, I think this was before Saints Row got like really wacky. We have like a complete cop. Oh, but the is ripped oh wah, wah. awful it's all ripped and all wah, wah. so i'll have to upgrade that in the future although i don't think that this is a too expensive game uh future me who's at it not all the prices will probably uh agree or disagree with me on that statement but uh yeah either way i think this was before it got like really wacky but i'm not sure um yeah after the century of the third it all started getting like wub wub gun done dub edition and stuff and yeah uh I, I, I don't know why, but this one just kind of feels different looking at the cover. Next, we have Connect Disneyland Adventures, a game that probably will not interest me too much, and I'll probably not play it too much. It's a complete copy. Uh, it doesn't come with the little card, although I'm not sure. Um, for anyone that doesn't know what I'm referring to, there's normally like a little smiley face card inside some Connect games for like calibrating the Connect. I don't know if, if any of those cards are different for different games. I don't know if uh, every game came with one, but this one certainly doesn't. Uh, yeah, on to the next game. We've got Medal of Honor Limited Edition. EA does Call of Duty. Uh, guy with a beard and a big gun. Uh, but yeah, uh, I don't know if the Limited Edition side of things uh, unlock an exclusive multiplayer weapon and get early access to two shotguns. So yeah, it doesn't mean anything. Uh, but yeah, never played it, uh, don't know anything about it, uh, wasn't really that big into like shooting games, like army games after the really early Call of Duty stuff on the 360. But next we have Titanfall, this comes heavily recommended, it is one I'll probably play in future. There was a video that I saw online of someone who did like a gravity bending, like shooting a bullet like over a building and like hitting a it was just insane. So like yeah, this is something that I'll definitely give a go to even if just to see what all the fuss is about. Next is Tomb Raider. Uh, I remember the early Tomb Raiders being just the like the hottest gaming franchise around. Uh, Uncharted has kind of stolen a lot of its thunder in later years. But uh, as far as Tomb Raider goes, uh, I've never really had a problem with it. I don't know how the modern sensibilities have kind of played with it uh, a bit. Like, I don't know if it's kind of lost in, uh, lost any of its appeal in translation when, like, modern gaming kind of took over. But I have played a bit of this on PC, uh, but I didn't get too far. But for the very lot I did play, 
I did enjoy it, so yeah. Next up, man, this box is just not getting any emptier. Next up, we have Rainbow Six Vegas. I probably need to start going a bit quicker. We have the Classics version. Uh, recommended me to buy an Xbox Live camera so that you can be the first to play with your friends face to face. You can also scan your face in, and it's like a clown face in the game. Fantastic. Um, I love little ads like that, man. They're like. Like games can take you back to a certain time, but ads for me just like insert you back in the time period in which stuff came out. Cause like this was like the coolest technology that they could think of. Um, it is not the classics version that I have, like as far as the desk goes, I think that this is just a regular desk. I'm not really worried. I've decided that this time around when I'm collecting, I'm not gonna be as like pedantic about classics, non-classics, uh, but yeah. Uh, speaking of classics, we have Just Cause 2. It is one of the kind of newer style classics and it is the classics disc as well. So at least it's nice and complete. Uh, the manual does look a little bit worse for wear. Um, Just Cause was loads of fun. I haven't actually played a Just Cause. However, I did edit a video uh, on Just Cause for the channel that I like edit full time for. And uh, it was just loads of fun. There was like tons of like weird glitches and like tons of like fun stuff. Uh, so yeah, it does look like it's a lot of fun. I don't know if the first game uh, and the second game held up as, or like are as crazy as the third game, but who knows? I mean, I've got a copy now, I can check it out. Um, speaking of Gears from earlier, we have Gears of War 2. Uh, this one was great. I got it on the day it came out. This came out the same day as Fallout 3 as well. Isn't that nuts? Like what a day for gaming. But yeah, Gears of War 2 was loads of fun. Uh, the story was amazing. Absolutely loved it. Then we've got Batman Arkham City, which someone did buy this for $15.99 and then some charity shop then just hoisted that bad boy out the door for 99p. But uh, yeah, it seems like it's a nice complete copy. Uh, it's not the original case that it came in though, because this is a two disc game and it's just like one of the little like single disc cases. But yeah, you push it hard enough, which probably isn't good for the game. But yeah, um, I haven't played Arkham City. I played Arkham Asylum. I played a bit of it on stream once uh, and I really enjoyed it. It does seem a lot though, like uh, Batman survives wholly based on gargoyles and vents. So who knows, maybe Arkham City is just uh, overtaken by vent and gargoyle companies and batman has to go and uh, sneak his way around uh, but it looks like it would be good fun so let's uh my goodness deus ex revolution deus ex was such a classic series on pc uh and i'm hoping that this one is more of the same uh i uh, have been thinking about doing some videos on like really like classic series that had entries on the 360 and deus ex is one that's on that list because of just how classic and influential the original game was next we have call of juarez Bound in Blood. I don't know if this was the first one, second one, what one this was, but it's cowboy game. Cowboy games are really popular for a while, especially around the time of like Red Dead Redemption. Uh, but yeah, I know absolutely nothing about this game, uh, but except that it is here. Next, we have Call of Duty Ghosts. Whenever Call of Duty meets the afterlife, you get ghostly army games. It's a Call of Duty game. I don't know what else to say about it, though. but we also have Medal of Honor Warfighter. Tighten up your boots and chin straps, lads. We're going to war. Uh, yeah, war games were obviously like super big on the 360 fighting. We hadn't quite invented the Battle Royale yet. Uh, so games like this, like online multiplayer, like, you know, just deathmatch lobbies were the go-to. And so these games were very popular at the time. I know nothing about Medal of Honor. I know a little about Call of Duty. That's about it. Next, we have Mass Effect, a game that I spent a lot of time running around the lobby in the early game and didn't really spend a lot of time doing anything else. Uh, but yeah, it's a complete copy, except it has the classics um, discs instead. It actually has both classics discs. What's this? It's a Mass Effect and then Mass Effect Classics bonus content disc. I don't know what that means. But either way, uh, it's a big RPG. That was another video I was uh, kind of uh, like toying around with making was exploring different RPGs on the 360, but RPGs are a very time intensive thing to do. Like RPGs is like, if you like, have a hobby of playing RPGs, then you have to dedicate a lot of time. Uh, so it is something that will take a bit longer, but Mass Effect is something that I'm kind of wanting to explore. Lost Planet, I remember when this game came out, or at least in the, the, the run up to this game, that it had like, it, it just had like an unprecedented amount of uh, like press for what it actually was. Um, it's made by Capcom. I think that for, I think at the time someone tried to make like a comparison to Gears of War for some reason. Has a little ad inside for a wireless headset, crazy. But uh, yeah, it's a complete copy. It's got like all the little ads and stuff. But yeah, I uh, this got, I think what was there? Three Lost Planet games altogether. 
Um, and it just sort of nestles itself in that like, you know, common in terms of release, but not that common in terms of conversation, Xbox 360 games. Speaking of, we've got Lost Planet 2. It's like Lost Planet 1, but the next one, uh, yeah, it's more of the same really. Uh, then we've got Plants vs. Zombies Garden Warfare. In my very early YouTube career, I did like a let's play of this game. Uh, and it was loads of fun. I actually, as far as online shooters go, this one is so much fun. It's like a little class-based shooter. Um, if you are if you are put off by the idea of like it being kind of childish looking, don't let that put you off because it is actually tons of fun. Um, there's a surprising amount of depth hidden beneath uh, like the you know fun cutesy exterior of this game. But yeah, it's so much fun. I don't even know if the servers are still up or. Like what's going on? I know there's a sequel. Maybe the sequel is still playable. Next we have Prince of Persia. I remember streaming a bit of this. And if I'm being completely honest with you, the acting in the game didn't really win me over. It just felt as though it was very kind of westernized for what it was. I thought we were going to have this kind of like, you know, Arabic kind of desert adventure. And we would be like steeped in like culture and lore from like you know, like that side of the world and it would be like loads of fun. No, it just, it seemed very kind of like cocky, westernized and it just, it felt off. Uh, the gameplay itself was good fun. The art style was nice. Uh, it wasn't what I was expecting. It was kind of like more cell shaded, but it was, it was nice looking. But yeah, as far as the performances go, it just felt kind of disjointed from what I expected the game to be. Uh, next, we have Lips. It's uh, like Guitar Hero, but instead of a guitar, you use your voice. Then we have Kinect Joyride. Uh, it's the number one joyriding simulator for the Kinect. Um, it is complete. It uh, has, oh look, it's there's that little card I was talking about with a little smiley face on it to like calibrate your Kinect. It doesn't look branded in any way. So I'm thinking that it would be possible to just get like tons of these cards and just make complete copies of games if that's something you're interested in. But yeah, we have a uh, copy of Kinect Joyride. Oh no, we're starting to fill up here. I'm gonna have to start moving some of these. Next up on the list is Time Shift. Now Time Shift is a game that I played a little bit on PS3. Um, whenever I like, I had a friend come over who brought over their PlayStation 3 and they had a copy of Time Shift and I played it for like 10 minutes and I really, really enjoyed it. Um, I am a sucker for anything to do with time travel. Um, I'm not a stickler for time travel. Like I don't care if you are like, you know, oh, you can't go back in time and interact with yourself because that would stop you from ever going back in time. I don't mind. I just enjoy the idea of time travel. I will believe whatever time travel rules your world sets up as long as you stay consistent to them. And it seemed that from the time travel fan, like fiction community, uh, it seemed the time shift is a game that uh, people actually kind of enjoyed. So I'm looking forward to it. I don't know how it holds up as a shooter. As long as it's like a little time travel -y bit of fun, then yep, I'll I'll enjoy time shift. Next we have SBK08. It's like a car driving game except with two less wheels. Uh, it is a complete copy, but it looks like it's a one disc uh, game in a two disc box. So we may have solved one of our earlier problems, <laughs> which is nice. Uh, but yeah, it's a super bike racing game. Uh, again, racing games is something that I'm starting to kind of enjoy a bit more. Um, I know that there are some racing wheels and stuff. I don't know if racing wheels would feel as good for super bike games, unless you can get some really cool super bike Xbox add on, but who knows. Next, we have Tom Clancy's Splinter Cell Double Agent, and I will not lie, uh, Tom Clancy series is a series that I have completely avoided uh, through no intention of my own. I, I have nothing against the series, but for some reason, these games have just passed me by. Um, I have a, a real want, though, to sit down and actually play through all of these. Um, I know that the very early, like, Splinter Cells, like the original Splinter Cells on, like, PS1 were just... People loved them. I think they got a release on the Xbox as well, which is nice. I could play them on the original Xbox. Or any of the others through backwards compatibility. Ping. But yeah, uh, this is one I see a lot. I mean, the fact that there are a lot of copies of Splinter Cell games shows how popular they were. Um, but anyway, speaking of popular ish we have prey uh prey is a game that's so good uh there was a second one released by a completely different company um but yeah this was made by 3d realms the same people who made duke nukem and i am a huge duke nukem fan he does not translate well into modern day sense and sensibilities at all but i still love the guy he's so dumb he's such a product of his time but that is absolutely nothing to do with this game which is uh yeah it's prey it's a complete copy there was a sequel in development for this but it got it got canned and uh, yeah, I have no idea why what happened to it. It's something I do plan on looking into for future videos. But yeah, um, it says portals change everything. Mess with your mind. 
who knows if it stands up to that uh, that self uh, proclamation, but yeah, pray. Next is Homefront. It's a game that I saw in my collection before. I think that there's like alternate cover versions of it with like loads of reviews. I really don't like covers that have like five stars from Lads Magazine or, you know, four stars from the Sunday paper. It's, I, I don't know. I don't really like it. I think that it's kind of like, it's just kind of cluttering. I really like like a nice artwork and like a simple box. And so I'm glad I got the home front version. That It's got a sticker that says nine out of 10 by Zoo. Who is Zoo Magazine? Why should I be listening to Zoo's opinion on whether or not I should play home front? If anything, that puts me off. Next, we have Hitman uh, Absolution Tailored Edition. The tailored edition includes the high tech suit and the Baratoli custom pistol. Cool. Um, that's one thing that I will say though about games that have like extra add-on content like on the front of the box and stuff Whenever you tell me that your game comes with like, you know Mega super awesome like crazy this feature if I have no idea what that feature is Then it's not really a selling point. It just sounds like jargon And I I'm not sure whether or not companies wanted it to sound like jargon, but it did in some cases uh, Either way, it's a complete copy um, Looks like a lot of these are complete copies. It looks like I got away uh, pretty good. But yeah, these games are so much fun. Uh, I've watched a lot of videos on Hitman where people take the game to like ridiculous extremes. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> Hitman games are good fun. Next is Connect Adventures, that game that everybody has but nobody wants. It's got its little uh, little smiley face card again. Again, they all look the same. It's a complete copy, which will probably surprise no one. But yeah game for the connect uh which was actually surprisingly fun um you can buy this for next to nothing it is by the way it is a, a little life hack for you it is a super cheap way of getting uh nice new like connect um cases because lots of people just kind of like you know traded these on without ever having played them which means that they're like nice and smooth and lovely and like not dinged up so if you ever need to replace cases for connect games uh, Connect Adventures is your best friend, but maybe try and play it along the way as well because uh, it's good fun. Next we have Connect Sports. Uh, it's like that fun Nintendo game, but not on the Nintendo. It's a complete copy. Uh, it uh, is like loads of fun. Um, I remember playing this one. I didn't play the second one, but uh, I actually kind of enjoyed the Connect. Uh, I, don't, I don't like moving around a lot. But uh, the Kinect was good fun whenever I did actually like want to get up and kind of bounce around the living room for a while if I had the space. Uh, the one thing that really weirded me out about Kinect Sports is that you see on the front here, there's like a little avatar. Um, so on the front of Kinect Sports Season 2, um, the avatar that's on the front of that is the exact same as the avatar that I made for the 360. And so whenever I'd walk past it in shops, it was kind of like, what am I doing on the front of that game case? That's kind of strange. Next we have Xbox Live Arcade. I, I absolutely love these games. Uh, these, I don't think they ever came with a manual, so I think I can call this complete. But um, yeah, it's uh, five like Xbox Live Arcade games. It's Pac-Man, Uno, Boom Boom Rocket, Feeding Frenzy, and Luxor 2. And you just put this on, you go ahead, you play like your old arcade games. This was essentially a uh, solution that Microsoft had for people who uh, didn't have the internet because in the early days of the Xbox 360, you couldn't really rely on everybody having an internet connected console because we just weren't quite there yet. And uh, so yeah, this uh, there's like a little series of these like Xbox Live games with like the best of Xbox Live on them. It's good fun. And there's a new paper in this box. Next we have Sleeping Dogs, uh, a game that contains no dogs that sleep. Uh, it's a game, it reminds me of Yakuza, I don't know why, um, I had a friend who played through all of it and liked it, I think they got like a platinum trophy on it on uh, PlayStation, so it's something I'll give a go to, um, because I recently played Yakuza on Game Pass, absolutely loved it, so if that's anything like Yakuza, then we're good. Next, we have Splinter Cell Confection, I already mentioned about other Splinter Cell games, uh, this feels surprisingly clean, it's got, uh, the manual and everything, so we got away nice there. Next, we have Target Woods PGA Tour 08. It is a complete copy. It is uh, it's a golf game. Surprisingly, I enjoy golf games. There was another feature in this as well. Same as the other one where you like took a photo of your face and you could look just as disappointed in the game as you do in real life. But yeah, it's a golf game. Golf games are good fun. I don't think there was any like individual year that had like better features than any other. Um, that, speaking of, uh, Tiger Woods uh, PGA Tour 07. Um, it's a complete copy as well. Uh, but yeah, I don't think that there's any that like anyone's like, oh yeah, you have to play like Tiger Woods like 12 or whatever. Um, I just think you can kind of pick the latest one and go nuts. Next we have Terraria, a game that I had a discussion with uh, people about on my old Discord, which is coming soon again for anyone uh, who wants to know and has been asking me about it. Um, but yeah, Terraria, uh, it's a complete version as well, though it's just like, it's not really a book. It's just like a little flap thing. But yeah, Terraria, um, this came out 
Oh, so here's my question, okay? And anyone else who has a copy of Terraria on Dusk out there, please check for me. So this is a classics game, all right? And as far as I'm aware, I have never seen a non-classics version of Terraria, and I don't know if any exist. Now, uh, in the inside of this, this is what I want everyone to check. Um, the Terraria disc itself is not a classics disc that's in this box. So I'm wondering, is this from a fabled non-classics Terraria, and it just so happened to be put in the wrong case whenever whatever retailer was selling this out? Who knows? Uh, yeah, it's uh, the 2D Minecraft game that doesn't like being called 2D Minecraft but you uh, mine and craft in two dimensions. Next, we have Red Faction Gorilla. I think this game was sold on the fact that you could destroy a bunch of buildings. It kind of like uh, pioneered uh, or at least perfected or at least popularized that like destroy large buildings with a hammer feeling. Uh, but yeah, it's a complete copy of the game. And it, uh, yeah, uh, I, I played a small amount of it when it came out and it was good fun. Uh, there was a sequel to it as well. Uh, I don't know how the sequel does. Speaking of the sequel, my goodness, there it is. Look at that. It's Red Faction Armageddon. Maybe the fact that you've destroyed so many buildings in the first one that it has become an Armageddon. Who knows? Anyways, the next game we have in the box is Assassin's Creed Brotherhood. I stopped playing Assassin's Creed after Assassin's Creed, uh, what was the other one? Revelations, uh, because Ezio was good fun. Uh, the first guy was a lot of fun. I can't remember his name. Uh, but I really liked the story of Desmond. And the game became less and less about Desmond's story as being like a modern day descendant of assassins. I just didn't really do much with it. Maybe some Assassin's Creed fans can point me in the way of other games in the series that kind of explore Desmond's story a bit more. But yeah, it just kind of became more about, yeah, here's a historical period in which would be cool to run around doing assassin stuff. So yeah, that's kind of my current feelings on Assassin's Creed, but we have Assassin's Creed Brotherhood, so that's all good. Next up in this obviously monolithically long video is Warhammer 40k Space Marine. This game was so much fun. I am not a massive Warhammer fan. I do have some friends that play like tabletop Warhammer and absolutely love it. I have played a little bit of it of, like myself, like little intro days and stuff. But yeah, this game was so much fun. Even if you haven't played Warhammer and have no idea about the Warhammer universe, this is so much fun. You are a space marine who has a sword that is also a chainsaw a la Gears of War-ish style. Except I think this did it first. I don't know. Um, someone can keep me right on that. But yeah, either way, it's loads of fun. If you like like spacey battle, like big tanky marine dudes. Great. Dr. Kawashima's brain and body and brain exercises. Uh, yeah, it's it's a complete copy. It You do movements and it tells you if your brain is bad. I uh, don't know how I feel about Dr. Kawashima making the uh, jump from Nintendo to Xbox, but I'm glad he's on our team. Next up, we have Watch Dogs. It's that game that used to be uh, Driver, but now isn't because they changed the name to Watch Dogs. Uh, it's got an underscore in the, na in the name, so you know it's about hackers. Uh, yeah, I remember uh, it was a meme between me and like uh, my friends who would watch E3 back in the day when that was a culturally relevant thing to do. That uh, you would watch and you would be like, yeah, we're going to get to see another trailer for Watch Dogs. Ha ha ha, because that game's never coming out. And it did eventually come out. It's a complete copy of the game. And uh, yeah, it didn't really do much. It felt like the game just kind of didn't live up to its hype. It probably could have if that hype wasn't the like most monumental amount of hype in that generation of games they just hyped this thing to hell they released so many trailers that looked amazing and it just felt like when the game came out that it was like too little too late but apparently it was still kind of fun next up is pgr3 i am currently playing through this game so this is a duplicate copy that i now have although i think mine doesn't have the manual so we are now all good but yeah this is actually lots of fun the one thing that i'm not kind of a fan of in recent games and maybe some people can point me in this year i think need for speed will fix this but yeah i don't like the fact that it's just like select a race you came first well done here's some money buy a car and then you go to another race with faster cars. Mm, cool. You won that as well. There doesn't seem to be any kind of like story. Uh, I'm not saying I need a super deep story. Like even something simple like Road Rash would be kind of cool. But yeah, uh, it's a fun game as far as the mechanics go. Not so fun in terms of the fact that I don't really have a reason to do anything. Next up is Halo Reach. Uh, it uh, was the one that came out after Halo 3, was it? Uh, was this made by Bungie? I don't know. 
Um, it was made by Bungie. I think this might have been the last one made by Bungie. Halo fans can keep me right on that. I did play the most recent Halo game. I haven't played this, but I have played the most recent Halo game, Halo Infinite. Nah, not really that buzzed. Uh, the open world feels like I'm doing Halo stuff, but it's disjointed because I have to run between places. I would have enjoyed if they like cut that map up into different sections, made it so that each section was like a different level, but I could revisit it to do like other stuff. I don't know. I, 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 I yeah. It, it just doesn't feel right to me, the, the new one, but who knows? Maybe Reach will be good fun. Far Cry 3. Uh, it is a uh, complete copy, apparently. Uh, and yeah, Far Cry 3 was good fun. I think Far Cry 4 was the one where you didn't actually have to do anything and you could finish the game just by like not touching your controller and you would win. I don't think it was the case with this game, although this game was the game that had that line at the start that was like insanity doing the same thing over again. I'm sure you know the one. But yeah, Far Cry 3. Uh, next, we have Prototype. Uh, it is a classics version. We actually have the classic one on site, although it says Platinum Hits. Uh, I think Platinum Hits was the, like, original Xbox's, like, grey label version. I don't know. Uh, either way, uh, Prototype, you play as Alex Mercer, you shapeshift. Cool. Uh, I don't know. I didn't really hear much about it. I know that there were a few of these games, but yeah, I'll, I'll give it a go at some point. It seems like it's kind of interesting. International Cricket 2010. Uh, it's like baseball, but boring. Uh, I don't know anything about cricket. I don't have any interest in cricket. I know absolutely... None of the players, none of the teams, none of the stuff. I don't know how it works. Uh, apparently a game takes like five days. Uh, so yeah, I don't know. Uh, next up we have Rainbow Six Vegas 2. It's another one of the Tom Clancy games. Uh, it's it's complete. Uh, and yeah, uh, this was uh, big at the time. No, I think the first one was big at the time. I don't know if this one did as well. Not sure. Uh, had a cool Easter egg in it, I think, though, where there was like a, a rave and an elevator. I don't know. Either way, next up we have Skyrim. Uh, I'm actually happy to have the, the normal Skyrim uh, because I have the like legendary edition for 360 with all the extra DLC, but it's kind of fun and nice to have like the normal one. It is a... Uh, complete copy in terms that it has the manual, but it doesn't have the map, which is okay because I am swimming in Skyrim maps. I, for some reason, I just have a lot of them. I don't know why. But either way, if you have not played Skyrim, you need to give it a go. It is so much fun. The game is... It holds up really well. Even the 360 version holds up well. Um, so if this is the only copy that you buy and you just spend like, you know, 80 hours running around Skyrim on the 360, it is so much fun. I know it's been out for like 11 years uh, now, but it, it feels just as magical as it did on the day it came out. Anyways, we are uh, making progress. Next up, we have Don King Presents Prize Fighter. I know nothing about uh, boxing games. I've never played a boxing game. That's a lie. I played that fun one with the guy with the big hair on the Dreamcast. That was good fun. But yeah, um, Don King. What a, what a character. Next, we have Resident Evil 5. Now, this game gets a lot of, a lot of flack. I absolutely loved this game. I thought it was so much fun. It, yes, it doesn't really feel like a Resident Evil game. It felt like it, we were really deviating away from the Resident Evil formula at this point. But this game was, oh man, I, I really enjoyed it. I played through it recently on the Xbox One and it's still as fun as it was when it first came out. I don't know what to say. This game is actually pretty fun. It's really good in co-op as well. If you have someone else and you run through the levels together, uh, so much fun. The DLC I thought was good fun. I thought that they didn't really skip on the quality of the DLC for this game. Um, if, now I know this is an Xbox channel, but like don't tell anybody. If you get a chance to play the Move edition of this for the PS3, like with the PlayStation Move. Oh man, so much fun. It's kind of like Resident Evil 4 on the Wii with like the really good aim controls. Except Resident Evil 5. Really, really fun. Next up we have Battlefield Bad Company. Uh, yeah, it's a complete copy of the game. And it's uh, Battlefield, I, uh, as far as I'm aware, no, I'm not in Shooter Circle, so I'm not sure, but Battlefield kind of pales in comparison to Call of Duty, am I right? I don't know, it just seems like a lot of people make fun of both of them, but people make slightly more fun of Battlefield, I don't know. But either way, we've got a copy of Battlefield, but we also have Sniper in a little broken uh, case, so we're gonna need to fix uh, that. Sniper Ghost Warrior, uh, wahoo, uh, do we call that complete? I, I've never played this, but I did play a game called Silent Scope in the local arcade whenever I was younger. Silent Scope was so much fun. Look up the arcade machine. It is super elaborate. It is loads of fun. Uh, that gun, like the sniper rifle on the arcade machine felt great. 
Uh, I don't think any console version of a sniper game is going to come anywhere close to it. Next up, we have Halo 3. Uh, there's nothing you can really say about Halo 3 other than it's Halo 3. It was the flagship game of the console. It's Halo and it's Xbox. Uh, next, we have 007 Quantum of Solace. Uh, it peaked with Goldeneye. I'm not get. Oh, no. The disc is cracked. Oh, man, that sucks. Um, I do think I bought another game bundle, though that like has this game in it. But yeah, the game, but yeah, the game disc has a crack on it. Oh no. Always be sure to check your game. I'll put this separate. Always be sure to check your game disc. So we're onto the last row of like 30 odd games. Next we have Saints Row 4. Uh, it's the Commander in Chief edition. Uh, if you're gonna have an edition, uh, a special crazy edition of your game, please write on the box what that means. Uh, this doesn't actually tell me what that means but either way um we have two manuals probably to make up for the broken uh 007 but yeah two manuals and a disc tons of fun it's like gta but wacky with dubstep next up we have army of two uh, it's like a full uh, army game but with two people uh it has an army of two manual as well as the ea official gaming guide 2007 2008 fantastic um, yeah, uh, co-op games got really popular for a while on 360, like local co-op games. Uh, Left 4 Dead was out, Resident Evil 5 then came out, Army of Two came out. I just think that this idea of like two people sitting down, like working together, like a small team rather than like a large scale, like online multiplayer, like I would like to see more of that. Um, there was that game, I think it was called No Way Out, that was made recently also by EA, funnily enough, um, that are published by EA that kind of did that two-player co-op thing as well so i'd like to see more of those i really enjoy those type of games where like two people sit down and like figure it out next we have the og assassin's creed uh it is a complete copy of the game a nice clean copy of the game as well and yeah assassin's creed this was loads of fun it doesn't have as many of the quality of life features of assassin's creed 2 um it was a very basic distilled down version of what assassin's creed would become which i suppose is what you expect from the first game in a series but yeah loads of fun if you are into assassin's creed games you owe it to yourself to play the og and we need to clear this out again my goodness like piles of games everywhere next is assassin's creed 3 it is assassin's creed a uh, game that made boats popular it took place in a forest uh and small little towns in america around the time of old america and yeah, uh, this uh, had such a massive hype train behind it when it came out. I remember I was on holiday once and stepped off a bus and there was a massive like statue of this guy that I walked into, bumped into him and apologized and then got really spooked because I was like, oh no, my time has come. Uh, but yeah, Assassin's Creed 3, it's, uh, apparently it's very good. It's the one, it's the first one I didn't play because of the earlier mentioned reasons. But yeah, I think I need to get over it and actually play it at some point. Speaking of Assassin's Creed games, Revelations, it's the last one that I played, although I don't think I fully finished it, uh, but I, I still enjoyed it. Um, good fun. Next, we have You Star 2, a Kinect game where you get to star in real movies, which I don't uh, think is uh, a, a, tr a fully truthful statement, uh, but yeah, either way, it's like a little movie quiz party game thing. Who knows, could be good fun. Uh, next up is uh, Ashes Cricket 2009. Again, know nothing about cricket. Uh, then we have The Biggest Loser. Uh, it is a ultimate workout. This was a massive selling point of the Kinect. Whenever the Kinect came out, um, everything became about exercise and about getting gamers off the couch. And uh, yeah, that worked out well. But yeah, um, it, it didn't really seem to like, no, all these games were just kind of cash grabs really, if you think about it. Like none of them really kind of put a lot of time and effort and they like actually getting people to do anything it was just kind of like wow we have a new motion controller and maybe it's the second coming of the wii so we need to get our game on there uh that's what it felt like anyway from the outside so i probably will not play this who knows maybe i will do an xbox fitness video but uh maybe not next we have battlefield bad company it is uh the the first version first game of the we we got the sequel earlier speaking of battlefield we have battlefield 3 uh yeah cool then we also have Crackdown 2. Now, I've only played... Oh, there's like a map and stuff. I love games and maps. Um, I've played the first one for a small amount of time only and only when I was on a live stream. Uh, I've never actually played any more of Crackdown. I heard that the third one is awful. 
Uh, but yeah, I I know the first one as well had like this whole hype train about like you could play with people on Windows uh, back whenever that was like such a crazy idea. Uh, now crossplay is like just a thing that's kind of almost expected and you're kind of jeered if you don't do it, if it's possible. But yeah, I don't remember the second one coming out. I don't remember the hype train around the second one. Maybe it was there and I just kind of missed it. But yeah, either way, Crackdown 2. Next, we have Batman Arkham Asylum. Uh, this is loads of fun. I think I've finished this twice. And uh, yeah, it's it's amazing. It's good fun if you enjoy Batman games. It's like super dark, super gritty. It's exactly what you would expect from a Batman game. Speaking of dark and gritty, Bioshock. Oh my goodness, this is loads of fun. I played Bioshock, I played Bioshock Infinite. I'm happy they're bringing the series back, although I'm a bit tepid about it at the same time, but I did not play Bioshock 2. Let me know if it was any good. I don't really, I don't know. I, I just, I, for some reason, I just skipped it. But yeah, we have a complete copy of it and it was loads of fun. It was a first person shooter, but you also like, were able to upgrade your body with plasmids so that you could like shoot bees from your hands and like set people on fire and like have telekinesis and stuff. Uh, it was like DNA altering under the sea. Like, oh man, it just, it's dripping in theme and charm. So much fun. If you haven't played Bioshock, you owe it to yourself to play it. Um, next up is Bulletstorm Epic Edition. Bulletstorm was a game made by Cliff Blazinski uh, where he tried to uh, combine shooting games with combos where you could like combo people with like a tether that you could shoot and like pull the, I don't know it was crazy uh it, they were obviously so confident about the idea that you got a Gears of War 3 beta invitation when you bought the game I don't know if that's a sign of confidence or non-confidence in the game but either way um yeah complete copy cool it's it's a shooter for Xbox next up speaking of fitness we have your shape fitness evolved if you aren't if you aren't the biggest loser, then maybe this game will get you there. Um, yeah, it's a complete copy of the game. Uh, it's another, as I say, one of those like games where you work out and they try to sell you workout stuff and the, there's an ad for Nevia on the inside for some reason. And uh, yeah, fitness. Speaking of Assassin's Creed 2, my all time favorite Assassin's Creed. This was so much fun. I don't know why. I don't think there's any one thing that I can pinpoint about this game that makes it the best. The, the characters were great, the setting was great, it was so much fun to explore, I felt like I wanted to explore and claim everything, uh, it, was, it was so much fun, it's a complete copy, although the case is a little bit smooshed, uh, but yeah, uh, Assassin's Creed 2, you owe it to yourself to play it, same as the first one. Next up is Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon Advanced Warfighter, I had to cheat and read the site because there's too many words to remember. Tom Clancy game, uh, what can I say? Uh, next up we have the original Just Cause, I remember we were just talking about it earlier as well, um, I don't think this one was as wacky as the other ones, um, but either way, uh, everyone, anybody that hasn't played uh just cause you have a tether that you shoot from your arm i'm starting to see that be like more of a thing uh, and you attach it to objects and you have some physics fun with those objects in like a gta style open world uh next up is halo 4 and it is a bundle copy but it only has like the little bundle copy thing at the bottom and it doesn't have like the banner that they normally have um it is a it even has like the proper bundle copy discs inside with like no artwork uh, it doesn't have a manual, but it has like a huge list of warnings like you know Like I'm gonna cause myself like major injury with this thing or something um, But yeah, either way Halo 4 uh, it was the first one made by 343 So this game had so many expectations behind it because 343 were basically the bad guys coming in who were taking the game away from Bungie who had left to make destiny at the time uh, But yeah, either way uh, I do think people enjoyed this, uh, so I think that it worked out okay in the end. Next up, though, speaking of games that worked out, we have Oblivion. Oh my goodness, the Elder Scrolls Oblivion. Look at that manual. That is a chonky, chonky manual. I love, I love the Elder Scrolls Oblivion. It is so much fun. There have been so many memes made about this game. As far as Elder Scrolls games go, I absolutely love this. Uh, I hated it when I first played it. It took me about 10 tries to actually sit down and go, right, I'm going to give this a good go. But once I, once I was hooked, I was hooked and that was it. And I played all of this and all the DLC and I explored everything and did like nearly every side quest. And oh man, it's, oh, it, it, it is peak gaming for me. Uh, Project Gotham Racing 4. I hope there's a story in this one because the last one, as I was saying, is kind of, it was kind of, you know, just, race the races and you know win the races but yeah we have a complete copy of the game uh which is great uh but yeah hopefully it's more uh driven than the first one uh next up we gears of war 3 i'm currently playing through a chunk of this at the moment 
um, on, oh look, there's even like a little bonus character card on site that's probably not redeemable anymore. But uh, yeah, either way, uh, the uh, I enjoy what I'm playing of it so far. The opening like split mission thing was kind of fun. Uh, I've got, I've put about five or six hours on that so far, but yeah, I, uh, I will finish the trilogy at some point. Uh, next up, we have about ten left, I think. We have, uh, Tom Clancy's Advanced Ghost Fighter War 2. Yeah, it's all the words again. Um, this one is a, uh, really kind of manky. Ugh. Uh, yeah. I'll clean you later. Uh, speaking of Tom Clancy's Ghost Fighters, we have Ghost... Fighter Future Recon Soldier in the Future, uh, which somebody clearly got a little bit hungry and took a bite out of. Cool. So yeah, uh, complete copy of the game. Never played it before. Don't know anyone who's played it before. Had nobody tell me it was good or bad or anything. I'm completely indifferent. So let us uh, get down to the final bits. We have Frontline's Fuel of War. Again, know nothing about it. Uh, except that it's another war game for a 360. Man, that would be like a huge video to do, wouldn't it? Like if you went through and like ranked every shooter on the 360 my goodness that would be a monumental amount of work uh we have face breakers speaking of boxing games i think if i was to play a boxing game this is the boxing game i would play probably not don king's prize fighters probably not ea fight night uh definitely face breaker because i mean look at that cover he doesn't want to play this madness it just looks like so much fun arcade style boxing sign me up next we have forza motorsports 4 but it is a bundle copy it seems that with every bundle copy we, uh, we, like, the bundle logo gets smaller and smaller for some reason. Um, this one has the worst back box art ever because it was a bundle copy. Um, it is the actual bundle copy inside as well. Uh, but it is the Essentials Edition. I have no idea what that means. It says, includes 320 of the best cars from Forza Motorsport 4 for the perfect introduction to Forza. So, this was, like, a hyped up, like, mega demo was it? Or it just doesn't have all the cars and maybe there was like in-app purchases as well maybe? I don't know. I'm just kind of making all this up. I'm gonna actually gonna have to play it to see. I know there was a feature in these games that you could hook up three Xboxes and have three copies of this game and play it across three monitors where you had like, you know, front and two side views. That's something I would love to muck around with and set up because um, I do think I have like a few extra monitors that I can use, but I definitely have enough 360s um, and these games are pretty cheap. So yeah, that would be good fun. Next, we have Fable 2, a game that I did not complete. Uh, my partner Tash completed it, though. Thought it was kind of okay. But yeah, uh, it's a complete copy of the game. Again, it just feels terrible in my hands. Definitely. I think my fingers are turning gray with all the dirt. But yeah, Fable 2, uh, was, uh, it was supposedly a feature that was teased at the start of this by the legendary game developer Peter Molyneux that said you could like plant an acorn at the start and at the end it would become an oak tree. And oh my god, that's crazy. And yeah, uh, as far as I'm aware, uh, Molyneux promises like lots of stuff and he has like a bit of a meme around him of like never actually delivering. I don't know. Either way, um, next we have De Blob 2 with a little adorable little rabbit looking blob paint looking guy. Um, the back is like black and white with some color on it. I don't know, but it looks like a little cartoony fun little adventure game. It's 3D compatible because there were a very small handful of games that had like 3D support on uh, the 360 but back whenever 3D TVs were like a big thing. Um, the most popular of which I think was Halo like 1, the remake, like the Halo Combat Evolved like remake uh, had 3D support but there were some other games that did as well. I know that the Thor movie tie-in did as well. Um, yeah, uh, I don't have a 3D TV so I can't really speak to it but yeah. Uh, next we have Dance Central uh, for Connect. It's like dance mat games, but without the mat because we live in the future. Uh, I am, I have the worst rhythm in the world, so this probably isn't going to do much for me. Next, we have Devil May Cry 4. I remember this game. I played it when it came out. I remember that it was good fun. The combo system was pretty wild. Uh, the the achievements were really difficult for some reason. I think I played like the whole game and I got like 110 and all the other ones seemed to be like really difficult or something. Maybe I'm just, maybe I just suck at games. But yeah, it's Devil May Cry. Um, if you really like like over the top, like uh, I think Japan, like Japanese inspired, like, you know, crazy, lots of visuals, like mad combos, S tier combo games and stuff, then yeah, this is the game for you. So I counted, we definitely only have 10 left. Next we have LA Noir. This game, Oh my goodness, I loved this game. It has three discs, is it? Yeah, three discs. Um, there were a whole bunch of DLCs for this. You can get, I, I still held on to it for my original collection, but there's like 
a collector's like special edition of this that comes in like four discs, like a big chunky case uh, that has all the DLC on it. Um, but still, this has become a bit of a meme recently with the whole like press X to doubt thing. And it had like really detailed like facial animations that the actors had to go through hell apparently to record. But either way, I really enjoyed this game. I thought the open world was really interesting to explore. Um, it was uh, made by uh, Team Bondi from Australia. Uh, they uh, like came up with all this new like facial capture tech for it. Yeah, it's loads of fun. Uh, watch any trailer and just allow yourself to kind of even pick it up on like one of the newer consoles. You can get like the complete edition on newer consoles as well. But yeah, it's loads of fun. Next up is Dragon Age Origins. I have never played a Dragon Age game, but I still have this from the last game collection that I had. So uh, this is a duplicate, but I think it's a nicer copy than the one that I've got. So it is an upgrade, but yeah, it's a massive like dark fantasy, like big, huge open worldy style game. Uh, it ticks every box for the type of games that I enjoy. So at some point I will sit down and definitely give all these a go. Next is The Darkness 2. Now this is a game series that I am in love with. Uh, I love Darkness 1, I love Darkness 2. I'm still kind of salty that we didn't get Darkness 3 because this does end on a bit of a cliffhanger. Um, but yeah, it's a game where you quad wield weapons uh, and you use your trigger buttons, like one trigger per weapon. Uh, you're infected with like this like demon snake thing that you can use to fight for you, but it like corrupts your soul. It's, it's so much fun. The sequel felt different from the first one. The first one did feel kind of rough around the edges, but I enjoyed it. It did get a lot of, uh, it did get a lot of, of, of kind of backlash. Like people didn't like it. Um, it actually ended up on some people's like worst Xbox 360 game lists, but I completely disagree. I love the darkness. I love the darkness too. I will be playing through these and doing full reviews on them because that will give an excuse to play them again. Next up is Forza Motorsport 3. Uh, it is a complete copy. It's just like uh, Forza Motorsport 4, but the one before it. Uh, it is a driving, driving game. Cool. Six games to go. Uh, we have Dead Island. I spoke about Dead Island at the start. Uh, it's a smashed case. I did notice that a lot of these like later release 360 cases were a lot thinner. Um, and then eventually they came with like voids here to kind of save plastic. And uh, yeah, uh, for some reason, these ones just, I don't know why, but they just explode everywhere. Like any time that these things just like get mishandled, like even once they just explode everywhere. But um, the artwork is intact, the dusk is nice, the manual is nice. So yeah, just replace the case and we'll be fine. Fast from last is Dead Rising 2. Speaking of zombie games, I loved Dead Rising 1. I played the demo for this. I played a good chunk of the um of of this itself but doesn't finish it i didn't play the frank west expansion for this but uh yeah the game itself seemed pretty interesting it's dead rising uh, wackiness where you go around and fight hordes of zombies by crafting together crazy weapons that don't seem like they would work but do loads of fun um kind of arcadey style the one thing that i don't like about it though is that dead rising cannot for the life of itself work out a good save system that doesn't involve you deleting your entire progress just dropped games with like one press of the button speaking of the game that i just dropped was dead rising and uh yeah it's a complete copy of the game and as i say loads of fun but the save system is awful like when you save all throughout the game when you die you can press a button that's like do you want to like do you want to play again or whatever you're like yeah cool let's go like i'm gonna beat that boss you hit like a and then the game starts again and you're like oh right okay i'm back at the opening cutscene again i'll i'll go ahead and reload my save nope that uh, tough you start a point you said you wanted to play again you're now playing again so yeah the save system in this is awful i really hope i'm wrong i really hope someone in the comments goes nah hurry atomic you're such a you're such a dummy uh, all you have to do is press this button and you can reload your save and it's no problem you're just being silly i really hope that's the case but i've been trying to play this game fully and enjoy it again ever since it came out and ever since i played it the first time and I just can't because I keep deleting my save file by mistake. Uh, third last, we have Battlefield 4. Uh, it's like Battlefield 3, but it's the one after it. Uh, and then we have Crackdown. We spoke about Crackdown earlier. Um, this one doesn't have the, the sticker on it that mentions like you can play with Windows Vista users because that was the whole thing. It was like, you can buy this for Windows Vista. And you, if you go online, you'll have Xbox players and Windows players all in the same lobby and everybody will have lots of fun. But this one doesn't have that sticker on it. Um, it's a complete copy of the game. And yeah, it just, uh, 
It's cracked on. It's like an open world style. Like you're the police in like a neo future type of city and you're going to stop crime in its tracks. And you've got cool weapons. And yeah, that's the game. Uh, next, uh, or in fact, last actually is Destiny. We spoke about Destiny earlier. Um, it's in another one of those like flimsy, like new style cases with no manual. Um, I don't even know if this is usable anymore. Um, I had a pretty bad experience with Destiny. So I got this not when it came out. I got it like a month after it came out. And I remember uh, logging, I played like the opening by myself. And then I like logged on with a friend to play and we were going up against some boss who had like a ridiculous amount of HP. And we sat for like over an hour, just emptying bullets from like a safe-ish kind of point, uh, like into this boss. And it was the most boring experience ever. It just felt like the levels of bullet sponge were just off the charts. And even if it, even if it was an area that I shouldn't have been in, like if I was like too low level to actually fight this boss, the boss didn't pose any threat to me whatsoever and we eventually did kill the boss. But by that stage, I was like nearly an hour and a half into this boss fight and it was just like, no, get me out of here. That was just terrible. Um, so I don't know if it's still up. I don't know what the story is with Destiny at the moment. I don't know what's happening. But yeah, uh, the guys who made Halo left the making Halo to make this cool. Anyways, that was my big Xbox 360 box that I bought the start rebuilding my collection back up again which is actually a lot easier nowadays than it was back whenever i was collecting before you can get lots of big bundles of games now that are a lot kind of cheaper and more cost effective now me recording time harry atomic obviously doesn't know the title because editing future harry atomic will put this video together but i'm even confident in saying now though that i know that i will have got more than my money's worth for all the games that are on here so if you are looking to start a collection if it's early and you're collecting kind of journey then one of these big bundles might be for you i only i think have like two duplicate games out of this that i can just go and like trade in or sell again and grab some more games but yeah these bundles are fantastic i absolutely love buying them they're loads of fun to open up on the channel and just chat about random games with everyone i am um, having loads of fun making videos again i've decided to make some shorts as well because some ideas that i have are kind of like too small for videos and the last time that i was making uh, one of the things that stressed me out the most was taking a small idea and like trying to stretch it into like a whole video and it didn't really feel kind of natural and it felt like you were making up kind of stuff to do and it didn't feel too good but now with shorts here it feels like if i have a short little fun idea i can make it as a short if i have like a long idea i can make it as like one of these videos and if i have a massive idea i can spend some time and eventually come out with a longer video again that is talking about something a bit more meaty but that is just a little fun story for all the people that made it to the end of the video if you enjoyed this video please consider subscribing to the channel i make all sorts of xbox content so if you like xbox i think this is the channel for you anyways thank you for watching and i'll see you guys next time